Hello and welcome to the Authority of Love. I'm your host, Greg Williams, and I'm joined again on this Family Foundation Friday by my co-host, David Walls. David, I'm going to say it again. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you being here and all that you do. Greg, appreciate you tremendously. Always good to be with you. Highlight of the week. Uh, well, it is for me too. I, I have a few. This is certainly one of them, and I know you do too. And uh, we've got several things we want to talk about. Yeah. We know they're in the veto period with Governor Bashir taking the bills, and there's several things that can happen there. I'll let you explain yeah. that however you want to a little bit more. But we also had something happen this last week as we come on the heels. We're actually in what many churches call Easter tide, that time after Easter, um, you know, leading up to Pentec- Ascension and Pentecost in Scripture and those kind of things. But our own president uh, made some clear statements and and omitted some clear statements. Share with our listeners uh, what was going on there, at least the best we can. Yeah, Greg, uh, and this you know got a lot of attention. Uh, this yes. this um, proclamation of, of transgender day of visibility that the the, go- uh, the governor, excuse me, the president, yeah. President Biden, put out on Easter Sunday. Now yeah. I, I just yeah. I was. As we were talking, preparing, Greg, Mm -hmm. you know, I saw people, I saw a little news clip about that. And I I literally, I wasn't going to let myself get caught up uh, in thinking about that on on Easter. (laughs) But I was like, is this a, uh, is this a day early April Fool's uh, (laughs) joke? But, but in in all seriousness, it it is, and what's the transgender day of visibility? I mean, it's really just a, a proclamation that the the Biden administration and and others uh, have done, um, to push the transgender uh, agenda, yeah. which is ultimately yeah. uh, a false radical ideology, an attack, a very attack on the foundation a of, very of God's created yes. order, uh, in a way that they're trying to use to, to push uh, an agenda and coerce really the entire culture into accepting something that, that's harmful and, and just simply not true. The idea. Yeah. That uh, you know that we as, as human beings get to choose our biological sex and yeah. not uh, are not uh, created from the ground up as men and women as we know Scripture right. teaches us. Right. Um, and so, but the contrast, Greg, and I know yeah. there was a very short paragraph paragraph yeah. that the, 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 <laughs> the president acknowledged about Easter as well. But it's hard to see this anything other than a intentional way in which the Biden administration was trying to. Uh, really subvert uh, uh, Easter to promote something that is in direct opposition. Anti-Easter. Uh, yes. We can say yes. Anti, yes. Anti-Christ. We can say that because it goes against the truth of Scripture. Here's another issue on that, David. You said, it, you mentioned, it not only damages and destroys children and young people and young adults or anyone that goes through that, but you mentioned it, it damages and destroys the foundations of our culture and society, and that is marriage and family. Absolutely. And I truly believe that's the enemy's desire in all this. That's what he's really after. Yeah. And that includes the church. Right. And so if churches aren't standing strongly on this graciously, but in that truth, they're going to fall prey to that, even if they don't fully believe in it, or if they don't stand strong on God's truth and against those things, they're going to suffer consequences. God's Word tells us that. So... It was a clear contrast. There's it, no doubt about that. It was, and I think it's a it's a, another wake up call as you you know for, for churches and for believers to realize. Look, th- this is a serious coordinated attack Battle. Yeah. on the on yes. the foundational truths of God word of God's word, and on um, that has impacts in our culture tremendously. Yeah. Uh, and it so certainly, uh, certainly uh, certainly concerning. But you know, I, Greg, what's interesting on this issue is, I, I really feel like. Um, the more that they continue to push this agenda, the more it's backfiring. Yeah. Because, I agree. you know, uh, the, the T in the LGBT has been uh, the biggest stretch for people to yeah. comprehend. Yeah. And to because, see what's happening be, to their children. Right, and those because kind of, yeah. it is, it, it, it's such an affront on what people with their own two eyes can can see, yes, yes. and it's asking folks to to buy into something that we all know is just simply not true. Destructive. And yeah. so, uh, my hope is that um, not out of a, a sense of uh, you know um, hostility towards anyone, but out of a love and compassion of wanting to see people uh, live out the reality of who God created them to be, that we will continue to see the culture recognize that this is a movement that we have to reject, yeah. and further than that. Yeah. 
the entirety of the, the, the sexual revolution that's, yes. that's pushing this agenda to yeah. say, look, we've got to go back and realize in the same way that we know that uh, what, what a man and a woman can't be redefined, marriage can't be that's redefined. Exactly right. Uh, either you got you uh, hit the foundation, <laughs> David. You went back to Genesis yeah. one and two and hit the foundation, and Jesus reiterated it, Matthew yeah. nineteen. Uh, and I would say this: you and I have talked about this before. We briefly mentioned it, but the the because Europe abandoned the word, generally speaking, yeah. the word and the church ten to twenty years before the United States did. They are about that far ahead in yeah. this, and they've seen the absolute destruction of this ideology in their in their states, in their yeah. countries, and they are shutting down almost completely across yeah. Europe. They're shutting down. It, they shut down the, the clinic in right. London. They're shutting it down because of the massive destruction that it's causing. None of this stuff they're telling us about depression and suicide rates is actually true. It's the other way around. Right. Hopefully we'll have enough listeners and people that will step up to say, let's not wait that long on these things. And to your yeah. point too, even on marriage, right? we can't do that. So... Uh, thanks for updating us on that, and uh, I think a lot of people may have known, but yeah. I hope we were able to give them a little more insight. Yeah, I mentioned the veto period. Tell yeah. our listeners a little bit about what goes on during this time. Yeah, Greg, and, and just to share a, you know, an update, you and I recorded last week uh, right before uh, the, the final day before the veto period start, and so certainly want to share a, 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 an update. Uh, but uh, we're, we've entered into essentially a, a two-week period where the governor can um, has the opportunity to veto bills that were passed um, um, up until this point through through uh, 58 days right, worth of, right. of the of the General Assembly. It's a 60 day session, so uh, they will reconvene on uh, on April 12th. I next mean, Friday, uh, right? Yeah, 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 next Friday, day, right? um, and then uh, and then also the 15th. So for for two final days where they can uh, override if, if they so choose, and, and they've done that on a number of issues, as you and I have discussed in the past, they can override the governor's veto on bills, and then they can they can do other business uh, right. and, and pass right. uh, you know other bills that are still in play. But, um, but what makes it significant is if they pass something on the last two days, then the governor still has an opportunity after that to veto it, and if he vetoes it at that no, point, yeah. there's no more legislative days right. for right. So really... Right. Uh, you know, what's likely to happen is anything that might get finished or passed on the final two days will be issues that the General Assembly is pretty confident that the governor yeah. will either yeah. sign or, uh, as folks may, may know, uh, the governor can choose not to sign or veto it and just let it go into effect after a period yeah. of time. Yeah. So they can stand yeah. and say, they pushed me on this, but I didn't want to sign it, things right. like that. Gives them some yeah. leeway, right? right. So our, I think one of the main things there is, hope you, you know, if you have questions, let David know it at, yeah. at info at KentuckyFamily.org right. on those things. Uh, but we need to pray. Yeah. We need to pray for our legislatures. We need to continue to pray for Governor Bashir as he goes through this time yeah. for those things. Now, you got some exciting news on one of them that's really good bill that passed yeah. we, midnight we, hour, yeah, right? Yeah, and you and I were kind of, Praying and, and that this yeah, would yeah. have been the case as we were recording, but but indeed, you and I talked about the important uh, bill protecting kids, uh, uh, House Bill 278 by Representative Matt Lockett, that the Senate uh, added a uh, important online protections uh, to protect kids from pornography by requiring pornographic websites to have to require age verification to ensure that children don't have access. Right. So that bill, as you and I discussed, passed the Senate on Wednesday of last week, and then indeed on uh, late in the night on Thursday, um, it passed the House overwhelmingly, 96 Both to nothing. Both of them, right? Yeah. Both of them were unanimous, yeah. right? So yeah. there was um, um, there was some some work that still had to be Drama. done, a number of folks that were uh, <laughs> yeah. pushing just yeah. to make sure that that got across the finish line yeah. ahead of the, uh, the governor's veto period. I would expect that the governor's going to sign sign this bill. Like I said, it passed. I think it was thirty six to nothing in the Senate. Ended up passing ninety six to nothing. Wow. It was yeah. a little bit of a conversation in opposition that was expressed on the floor, but even those that kind of spoke against it ended up voting for it. And so again, just to remind uh, Greg, the listeners, this bill will require that um, that pornographic websites have to have meaningful age verification to ensure that children don't have access. And this is similar to, I think it's eight, maybe nine states now that have passed similar laws, uh, including Texas. 
Uh, we, you and I discussed last week, we won't go through it again, the, the harms that we know of, of pornography in general and specifically pornography as it relates to children. And these bills have uh, uh, been effective. In, in, and in some cases, some of these major pornographic websites have just shut down access altogether yeah, in states. Lord, that's awesome. So I, I'm, and we, I, I pray it happens here. I really yeah. do because it's very destructive. Yeah. And by the way, Part of that is not just that that uh, minors have to verify. Yeah. It means that everybody that gets on has to verify right. that you're a minor or not. Right. So you're you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. And we all know that people don't want to be associated with that for the most right. part because it's not good. Yeah. So anyway, uh, continue to pray for that to go through. And then yeah. you've got a few bills you wanted to mention that I think we need to keep in mind and keep in prayer yeah. for next session, right? Maybe, right. Yeah. Well, and we there, look. The reality is that there was a there, there's a lot of disappointing missed opportunities. Right. That the uh, important bills that the legislature, for a variety of reasons, and we'll continue to share our analysis once the session completely concludes. Mm -hmm. But a number of bills that we'll that we'll discuss that um, most likely are um, um, the governor would veto, so they didn't get passed before the veto deadline. Right. So they're probably, right. I mean, they're, they're probably. Dead till Dead. next session. Yeah, like you know, and one of them was the big conversation about um, Senate Bill Six, the the DEI bill to protect our our uh, diversity, sure equity, and inclusion, inclusion. Right. Yes. A lot of conversation. That was a priority bill in both chambers. Senate Bill Six didn't get it. Ended up taken up. So that bill didn't pass. You know, we shared a lot, Greg, you and I, about the Baby Olivia Act. Uh, throughout uh, the last couple months. Which was the video in right. human development in the womb, right, yeah, for that, education. Yeah. That bill did not pass. Uh, we had the Religious Freedom Restoration Act update uh, by, uh, by Representative Steve Rawlings. Uh, the House never gave that bill a vote. Uh, and then we had the medical conscience protections and to ensure our health care workers a, a recruitment and retention act. Uh, that was Senate Bill 239 by... Um, Senator, Senator Douglas, Douglas yeah, that yeah, bill, as we had yeah. shared, had passed the Senate, but uh, and there would have been time, but but wasn't given a committee hearing and didn't move yeah. forward in the, yeah. in the Senate. We, we are thankful that's the first time that bill or related issue has passed out of either Not chamber. Far. So yeah. that I mean, yeah. it is a step forward, and yeah. as we know, sometimes it it, it takes a time. <laughs> the wheels are I will say that so. issue though is ripe. It, yeah. it, you know, it's been yes. worked on by the Family Foundation and others for multiple sessions yeah. now. And I think we're going to continue to see concern that Kentucky hasn't joined other states in ensuring that our, our medical workers have uh, the, the protections that they need to be able to confidently um, perform their, perform work. their right. duty, yes. but to ensure that they're never right. coerced to do things right. that are in violation Comfort of their, their oath to do no harm. Right. And, and, and their the, conscience, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll be sharing more analysis after the end of the session, uh, but there certainly were some important issues that, uh, that could have easily... Yeah. have been passed that the legislature chose not and to. And that's why we asked for prayer. Yes. And by the way, we have a primary election coming up in May. Kentucky and we're going to talk about that more, but yeah. tell them where they can find more information. Yeah, we're going to be uh, soon. We're partners with iVoterGuide. And if folks go to our uh, Voter Guide website at votekentucky.us, we're soon to be publishing uh, and giving access to Kentucky's iVoterGuide, which is a great Christian uh, voter guide resource covering Kentucky's uh, upcoming primary election on May yeah. 21st. Yep. And then, of course, we'll also have a voter guide for the general election there as well once we get to November. More to say on that, but we always yeah. encourage folks to, to vote, and primary elections are primary uh, for right. a reason. So it's important right. that folks get out and vote on May 21st. Yeah. Wonderful. And so there's a lot going on still. We'll continue to give you updates on that. Don't forget to pray for our Supreme Court justices and the, the uh, chemical abortion case that's before them. Thank you for joining us. Thanks always for your prayers and to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. I'm Greg Williams with David Walls and you're listening to the Authority of Love.